Hello everyone, Zane here and welcome to another Island Sanctuary video. Today I'm going to show you guys how to level up your island from level 16 to 20. Despite the fact that I've already finished mine last night, I can still give you guys some tips and tricks. So the first thing you want to do is your workshop. The Overseas Casual Discord and I think Reddit also will give you the mid-maxing that you guys can use to level up casually with your handicrafts. If you are missing some items or some ingredients they do have alternatives as long as you have four workshops so make sure that you set yours up on a day-to-day -day basis checking out reddit and the discord for advice or if you want you can wing it yourself by checking the demand here but this is basically how i do it next is your crops and your pasture now you're going to be doing this manually so if you have your mammoths on auto, you want to take them off. It is 50 experience points per leaving gathered, so 1,000 per day if you have 20. Same thing with your crops. Take your mammoths off automation and gather these yourself. Every two days, they will grow, giving you 120 per plot gathered, leaving you a 3,000 every two days, or 4,000 if you combine them with the pasture and the crops itself. Okay, so that is going to be your option too. Obviously the handicrafts and this is going to be on a day by day basis. So there you go. The next thing is, of course, gathering yourself. This is 10 points per items gathered. So this section here by the river is going to be option one. Option two, which is probably the most fastest way, is the summit up here at rank 10. You get flying. By the sea is option four or three. By the beach is option four. And then if you are past level 16, option five is going to be in the mother load area here. All right. So I'll take you guys over there and show you the route that I took to gather my experience points. All right. So here we are at section number one. This is X 18.1, Y 17.9. You're going to start off with gathering this sugar cane here. Then you're going to collect this one, then that one, this one, that one, and these two over here. This is going to cover your vines that you're going to be needing for something later on. Then you come over here by the river, grab this rock here, come over here, grab these two, drop down and grab this one, this one, come over here and grab these two here. Then you're going to pop up up here, grab these two. The tree because you're needing the branches from this come over here grab these three or four sugar cane here and then hop back over here and start all over again so this is going to give you the vines this is going to give you the ores for the bait and also the sticks for the bait as well that's something i'll be doing a little bit later so that is option one next is going to be the summit so on the summit here, this is the fastest and best way to gather experience points, is you're going to start with this section here, and then you're going to go clockwise. Go to this one, this one, this one, this one. This one back here, come back and get this one, this one, this one, this rock, and then start over again from here. Alright, so this is the option two and the best way to gather experience points is by gathering itself. Okay, it's 100 per cycle, so you need about 10 cycles to get 1,000 experience points each. All right, so that's going to be option number two. Option three, which is going to be the beach area, this is where you're going to get most of your hemp. So you want to start here at X29.8, Y26.4. Grab this guava plant here. Then you're going to come over here and grab this one. If you want, you can grab the palm tree there as well. Then on your way this way, you're going to grab this palm tree and the guava plant here. Then you're going to grab this one. Grab this one. This one's next. Come over here, grab the tree. Over here with the other plant. Then you come over here, grab this plant here. Come out here and grab this one and the two trees if you like. The mound over here is optional as well. And if you want rock salt, you can come over to this cave here, which is completely optional. Grab these here, and then travel all the way back to 
uh, spot one and then rotate all over again. So you're gonna be needing a lot of hemp and of course rock salt. So that is going to be option three. Option four, like I said, is going to be under the water of coral sands. So you're gonna start with this seaweed tangle here because you'll be needing the laver. Then you're gonna come to the coral here then come out here to the seaweed. Then you're gonna make your round to this one, this coal here, over to here. There's two on top of this rock if you wanna grab those, but it's not necessary. Come to this tangle here, this one's next. Then you're gonna make your way to this one, over to this one, grab the seaweed here. Then you can make your way back to grab this coral, grab this one. And as you're making your way back, you can grab these two and then start back up from the beginning where we first started here and then here. So you can be getting your levers, your squids, and your coral here. So that is going to be option four. And area number five is going to be in the mother load. Now you're going to be needing these items anyway for upgrading your granary and your workshops. So you might as well get them now. So you're going to start with this rock here. Then you're going to get this crystal, which I already gathered. Then this rock here, and then basically follow the path around the chasm. Just like this. And then start from the beginning. Okay? So, in order to get the mother load unlocked, you must talk to the furball in the cozy cabin to get the bestest mammoth sized building tools and to unearth the mother load which is going to be this wall right here that you're going to examine. After you get this unlocked, you're going to be getting the crystal formations. Why? Because they will give you the hawk-eyed sand. This is going to be used in making the mithril pickaxe. The other two mat uh, three materials are already gatherable, but the hawk-eyed sand, you need three to get the pickaxe. After that, you'll be getting the durium sand from the rough black rocks, in order to get the chisel with the hawk-eyed sand and the gold ore. The gold ore will come from the yellow items here. All right, so that's where you get the gold ore. And those are the two tools that you're gonna be making. That's a one-time thing, but the mammoth tools to give you a little bit of a chunk of experience. All right, so that is going to be all of the areas that I recommend to gather to get experience points and also get your materials. And now the final option is, of course, crafting some feed and restraints. Now, the problem with this is that you cannot discard anything. So you're going to have to basically use them all. With the feed, these are going to be used passively when you're doing your pasture. So they're going to end up being drained anyway. But if you want to drain these a little bit faster, feed them immediately after their heart drains just a little bit. That's where you guys can use your crops. Now, as for restraints, again, if you cap out, you're going to have to utilize them in order to make more. But this is going to be 10 experience per item made. So this is where the vines and the branches come from. If you want more branches a little bit faster, this area right about here along the river will have a bunch of branches that you guys can get. It's one of the hardest ones to get because there's not that many trees that drop them. As for the other restraints, you need three hemp and a iron copper ore for the middle one. And the last one is the laver, iron sap, and the jellyfish. The laver is used in a lot of recipes, so this might not be a good option. I would go with the makeshift net because the vines are abundant and the branches, you don't need one, so it doesn't take that long to make these. And as you can see, I've had 999 most of the time. Once you hit rank 20, unfortunately, you will get the new bait which is 100% catch rate, which is great for catching some animals that you want for your pasture, but just for aesthetics only. But yeah, making the bait and the feed as many times as you can is a great way to get experience points if you're impatient and don't want to wait for your pasture and your crops. But other than that, those are the only ways that you can level up on your island. Now, the last thing before I forget, even though it's a one-time thing, the granaries will be upgraded, I think, with 17. And as for the workshops at level 19, these will give you 12,000 points each up to 48,000 for all four. And with the vision complete from completing all these upgrades, 20,000 experience. So it's three fourths of the way done from 19 to 20. All right. But that is the final way to level up your own sanctuary from 16 to 20. 
All right, guys, so that's pretty much going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Like, leave a like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you're new for more Final Fantasy XIV content and join the first brood. If you guys want to join my Discord server, the link is in the description down below. And if you guys want to support my channel monetarily, I do have YouTube memberships available and a Patreon link to my Patreon page in the description down below. So until next time, may forever walk in the glorious light of Lord Bahamut, and always remember the key forging my head. Good luck.